Hi, I'm Pete Wood and I'm the Head Technology Evangelist for RS Components and I'm here with John today at SDR Play and he's handed me this little black box and I'm kind of thinking, well, what is this? Um, I know it's a radio of some sort, uh, it looks pretty simple and uh, it looks like I can do loads of stuff with it, but uh, John, you know, tell me all about it. So John, tell me, what can this little box actually do? I can see there's an antenna input here and there's a USB plug here, but other than that, it just looks like a black box. Well indeed, but inside there's a bunch of filtering, there's analog, analog to digital conversion and uh, all the electronics necessary to provide um, a, an IONQ signal to a host processor, which could be a Raspberry Pi, it could be a more powerful Windows PC, and that is the environment which, uh, using software, allows you to analyse and post-process uh, whatever those signals are. Okay, so that's the software-defined radio part of the of the, of box. the total solution, and we'll go on to show some dem uh, some examples of that in a minute. Cool. So, um, if you think of a PC today, um, most PCs or Raspberry Pis have got easy ways to uh, interface them to um, the, vid the visual spectrum uh, with cameras, all sorts of sensors, um, but really the radio spectrum has been a little bit neglected, and so back in the 1980s, I had friends who had CB radios and they were in their garage and they were talking to people all around the world. And when the internet came along, that kind of disappeared and people put these in the cupboard and they never saw the light of day. And what's really exciting about these things is that it's kind of bringing radio to the digital generation. Now, RS Components, uh, which is 80 years old this year, started their roots in radio. They were set up to get radio spares into people's uh, homes during uh, wartime and, and to fix their radios with the valves and things. So radio is right at the heart of our heritage here at RS. So what's really exciting is to take a product like this and kind of bring radio back into the catalogue, if you like. So um, I understand you can connect these things up to Raspberry Pis. Um, you no longer need to have a, a big chunky computer to do it. Um, all you need is an antenna to stick out of the window. And I think you can start listening to broadcasts from all around the world. You can um, listen into um, radio radio, low power radio signals from things like LP1 and um, also I understand you could probably listen to the International Space Station as well if you get in the right position with it. So I'm really quite excited to try and plug one of these things in and have a go. Okay, so we're going to fire this thing up. We've got our Windows laptop here. You can also do this on a Raspberry Pi but we're going to do this with the Windows laptop today. And I've got my antenna, I've got my USB cable and I've got my box. So first job is to go in and download the STR Play software. So we're going to go to downloads and uh, we're on the Windows version here so we'll go straight for this one at the top and I'm not a robot so start the download. Okay, okay so it's downloading now. Okay, so we're done. So we're just going to open up the file, run it. Okay, so now we need to connect up the, the box to the USB, so in that goes. I just saw that pop up there. Okay. Okay, so all connected. So what we need to do now is get our antenna on so we can start trying to receive some stuff. Okay, we're just going to use this little whip antenna here. Um, hopefully, I mean, we're in a building here with lots of other buildings around us. It's a bit of a Faraday cage, but we'll give it a whirl. So, there we go. We're attached. And the next job is to see whether we can start trying to pick things up. So, 
Okay, so I think we're on wideband FM here. Yes, we are. So let's switch to stereo. Right, and you can see here the frequency. So down here is probably here in the UK, Radio 2. On BBC Radio 2. It is. <laughs> uh, moving up, probably Radio 1. No, that's Radio 3, I think. And then we've probably got some more of the local bands up here. So this is probably some more of the local sort of radio. That sounds like Capital or um, Heart FM there. So this is really cool. Um, so this is just obviously free to air broadcasts that are coming through now. Um, and you can obviously go up and down the frequency spectrum and pick up all kinds of stuff. But obviously there's loads around the FM band here as, as we can see. So yeah. Great. So just in a few short minutes we've managed to actually pick something up which is really cool. Uh, and on just this tiny little antenna as well, which is pretty impressive considering where we are in the building here. So really excited to have a bit more of a play with one of these. Um, try and uh, check out the, the ham radio bands as well, see if we can get some chatter on that as well. But yeah, so far, uh, seems very simple. Um, and I didn't read any instructions, uh, just had a tinker and uh, yeah, really, really cool. So these are not only great for people to learn about radio, but actually they've got a great practical application for the, the commercial world and in labs. So imagine in a lab you've got lots of expensive equipment, sometimes you need to do tasks, but this in fact could replace some of those tasks. It's much uh, a cheaper alternative, it's very versatile, it's portable, you could use it as a data logger and a spectrum analyzer, and you can do some really, really cool things here with the same that you could do on a very expensive piece of equipment.